Hello, my name is Branislav Hatala and I'm going to show you how I implemented the recoil into my first person shooter in Unreal Engine. Let's start by looking at some other games. This is Insurgency Sandstorm. This game has one of the best recoil systems out there. The recoil in this game is very strong and it is integral part of the gunplay. And this is Titanfall 2, another game that implements recoil very well. The recoil is much weaker since it plays lesser role in the gunplay. This is a movement shooter. Yet recoil plays a significant role in how does the each weapon feel. And even with its small intensity still it adds a lot to the gunplay. And this is my implementation of recoil. My implementation is part of the weapon class and is highly customizable for each weapon implemented in game. For performance reasons I implemented this in C++, but I'm not going to hold you back from trying it in Blueprint. Let's start with some basic theory. Weapons recoil is caused by mainly three things. The first one is the force that pushes the bullet forward is mirrored by opposite force that pushes the gun rearwards. These forces have the same magnitude and are represented by green arrows. The second thing that causes recoil are pressurized gases escaping the barrel just after the bullet has escaped it. This makes the barrel act like a thruster. I will leave the third thing to the real expert. Something that I've found both through experience and through watching high speed video for a long time is the recoil of a gun is not so much determined by the weight of the gun or the cartridge that it's firing. It is determined by the velocity of the bolt when it impacts the back of the receiver. Because at that point, all of this kind of hypothetical energy that is, is in the bolt as it's moving, all that energy gets transferred into the shooter when the bolt comes to a sudden and abrupt stop at the end of the receiver. Ian McCollum in this video is shooting gun that was designed with this fact in mind, to reduce the recoil. In this clip we can observe this effect in action. Look closely how the gun jumps back when the bolt stops in most rearward position. First two forces are applied along the red line, which represents the axis of the barrel, while the third force acts along the green line, which represents the trajectory of bolt's center of mass. The vertical displacement of these lines from the place where buttstock is pushing against the shoulder causes muzzle climb. You can see this on footage of me shooting an AK. Notice how the muzzle climbs askew. This chart represents how recoil force measured over time looks like. For realistic result, we would have to apply values from this curve over multiple frames. The problem is that the time axis is in milliseconds. If we would draw lines representing 60 frames per second into this graph, it would look like this. This approach is impossible because this waveform is shorter than two frames. The system I created allows you to specify different recoil properties for each weapon blueprint you create. I will explain the meaning of each property on the circle on the left. Imagine that the center of the circle is where the player is aiming with his weapon when he shoots. Recoil magnitude is represented by the radius of the black circle. This is the angle player's aim is displaced after each shot by recoil. The recoil max angle left and recoil max angle right properties are represented by angles A and B respectively. This defines the range in which player's aim is moved. This can be negative. For instance, if you would define A as negative number, your recoil will always pull your aim to the right side. Recoil mean multiplier is represented by a gray circle. This property enables you to define recoil's variability in magnitude as well. Value of 0.9 means that the recoil may be scaled down to 90% of its defined magnitude. 
For each shot, one single recoil vector is generated, similar to these represented by the red arrows. Let's start by creating curve of our recoil force over the time. I define my curve to be like this. To avoid dependency on the frame rate, we will use the trapezoidal method and work with the area under the curve. First step is to define these properties in the header file. I defined it in weapons class. You may choose to implement recoil in a separate component if you will. Next we will be defining the functions. However, there is one property I will have to tell you something about. The latest one, wielder. This property has to be set and I am not setting it here in code, I am setting it in another class. I am setting it in inventory system. You may want to set it on a weapons pickup or any other event. This property is a pointer to the player spawn. We will also need the following variables. These have to be specified in the header and they can be private. After this point feel free to pause the video at any time to analyze the code and try understand it yourself. After you define this function, call it from a function responsible for firing the weapon. In the next screen we will take a look at this function. It has to be called from event tick to apply the recoil over multiple frames. And this is the body of this function. It calls three different functions, which I will show you in the next frames. This is the function we calculate the force of recoil in this current frame. We calculate the surface under the curve using the trapezoid method. The trapezoid is split between the triangle on the top and the rectangle on the bottom like on this picture by the horizontal line. Update samples function is by far the simplest one we need. Also, let me remind you again, do not forget the wielder variable. It has to be initialized somewhere. It should point to the player spawn. Also, if your NPCs use these weapons as well, don't forget that you are not supposed to call these functions because it will move the player's cursor if the NPC fires that gun too. I hope you find this video useful. For now, I would like to say goodbye and I wish you best of luck in your future endeavors.